I didn't think things through. People were saying so many things about me. Samantha lost her job. I wasn't pregnant. Hello, it's been a while since I've made a video from the comfort of my bed, so I thought, why not? We're coming up on my three year anniversary of finding out that I had cancer, so I figured that was the perfect time to make this video. Really quick, I wanna mention this because I know I'm gonna get questions about it. I didn't make a video last week on this channel because I put a video up on our other channel. I have a channel with my husband, Gray. We make videos there. And just so you guys know, I probably won't be uploading a full length video on this channel for a few weeks because the next couple of videos will be on that other channel as well. We have a lot of stuff going on over there. It's our wedding anniversary coming up and we're taking a huge trip. We also have like a life-changing announcement that's coming up on that channel, so be sure to subscribe to that if you wanna like know what's going on. Like a lot of you know, I have a full-time job, so I don't really have time to make two full-length videos a week on this channel and the other channel, so I'm going to be making some shorts on this channel, so I hope you guys enjoy those. All right, now that we got that boring stuff out of the way, let's get into the video. We're going back to March 2019 when I found out I had cancer. March 7th was the day I was diagnosed and I actually found out while I was on the phone with my mom. She had called me about a completely unrelated thing. I was helping her with like Google Docs or something. And then my breast surgeon called me and so I was like, hey, hold on, I'm gonna take this call. The breast surgeon then told me the news that I had cancer and she said that I could come in and talk more about it with her that afternoon. So I had to go switch back to the phone call with my mom. So the very first person I told about my cancer was my mom because I was already in the middle of a conversation with her. I basically just said that was the breast surgeon and there is cancer. <laughs> my mom had been in the loop up till this point. So me just saying that was kind of just like another step in the process of like us just learning more information together. But she was kind of just like, really? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, you should come home. <laughs> I was actually at my boyfriend's house working from there because I had taken a work from home day because I had had a biopsy the day before and I was like still kind of sore and I had to like ice the area and change out stuff. So I just didn't really want to be in the office dealing with that. My boyfriend, who is my now husband, by the way, I was like, oh, Gray just left for class and I'm still working. Maybe I'll come home on my lunch break. Gray had just left, so he hadn't quite gotten to class yet. He was like on the bus on his way to class and I texted him. I basically was like, hey, do you have time to go with me to the doctor later this afternoon? They found out it's cancer. He immediately calls me because why would you not? Like, why did I text him? Why didn't I call him? <laughs> he was like, do you want me to come back? And I said, no, 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 just go to class because he had some discussion or presentation. Also, I was totally fine. Like if I needed someone to be there with me, I would have told him to come home. But like, I was just kind of like taking the information in and being like, all right, this is a little bit more than we knew yesterday. We still don't know much about the cancer. Like it could just be really early stage. Wasn't true, but. So after I told Gray, the third person that I actually told was my manager because he had known that I was like taking off for a biopsy. I was sitting and I was doing my work and then People started asking me a bunch of questions just about work, but I was just like, you know what? I can't do work today anymore. So I messaged him and I was like, hey, they found out I had cancer and I'm going to go in for another doctor's appointment later this afternoon. Can I just take the rest of the day off? And he was like, yes, absolutely do that. My mom really was the person who started telling other people. She obviously told my dad right away and she started talking to the doctor that actually did the biopsy that was like in the lab doing everything because she's a family friend. I'm not quite sure who all the people are she told that day, but I'm guessing she told my grandmother and my two older siblings. That day I was just kind of sitting at home. I was Snapchatting my Snapchat streaks and just like kind of chilling, taking in the information. And one of my friends, Cassie, who was my top Snapchat streak at the time, I think, one of my really close friends and roommate, she Snapchatted me that uh, she was really sad because she left her food leftovers at the restaurant. Like she left them on the table and forgot to get them. She was like, today's the worst day ever because I left my chicken wings at the restaurant. And I said, yeah, I agree, Today is the worst day ever. And she said, oh, did you also leave your chicken wings? And I said, no, I found out I have breast cancer. And she was just like, what the heck? And then she immediately started texting me and I was just like, wow, this was a really dumb idea for me to tell someone. Again, just over the phone 
not like waiting for them to be in a situation where they were like, you know, sitting down and at home and not around people because she was in the middle of her class. Gray was on the way to his class, like surrounded by people on a bus. So like, I, I just, I, I didn't think things through at the beginning. I've said this in other videos before, I didn't really think through how much people cared about me and how much this was going to affect them. Because me, I was just like, oh yeah, this is happening. Like, this is just how my life is. And I assumed other people would react that way, but obviously they were just like more concerned about me than I was. <laughs> so we went to the appointment with my breast surgeon and they did another biopsy under my arm to see if it was in the lymph nodes, and it was. They started saying that I would probably need chemo and then surgery and radiation and then some years of hormone therapy. So they basically were telling me, hey, like this is going to be a really hard year, but we should be done with all of your active treatment. We should be done with radiation by Christmas. I'm not gonna go into a lot of the details on that because I have other videos about it, but after that appointment, we really did know a lot more. So it made more sense to tell other people things. My mom immediately went into like research mode and she started assigning people jobs. The job that she gave my older brother was calling a lot of the family so he called a lot of people <laughs> gray and i had decided that we wanted to go get frozen custard after the appointment so we did that and i think we called um gray's mom from the parking lot and she was just like whoa like that's crazy and you know i'll pray for you and then i think she told like the rest of his family so i think those are really all the people that knew that day my mom waited to tell my younger brother and that was because he had a lot going on. He was in his first year of college. I think people were just kind of not wanting to tell him because they just didn't want him to have to think about it. And then I think eventually my older brother was like, you need to tell him. And I don't, I don't know which one of them told him, but somebody eventually told him and it wasn't me. <laughs> on March 11th, I went into work that day and I had an appointment with HR. And this was because I needed to figure out like what was going to be going on with my work situation. My work, thankfully, was super accommodating. I actually had just started there, so I didn't have like all of the full benefits or something. But since I had done an internship the summer before, they were able to take those few months into account and help me out a little bit. So I was able to get a lot of help from them and they basically kind of were just like, we will make this work for you. So that was super nice. The next day on March 12th, I told all of my best friends from high school. We had like a Facebook group for us where we like posted pictures whenever we were like doing things together or we were like, hey, do you guys want to hang out? And we'd put it in this Facebook group. We don't really use it anymore, but at the time like, that was the thing we used. I had six pretty close friends in high school. We all did marching band together. I said, hey guys, I wanted to fill you in on some news. Last Thursday, I found out I have breast cancer. It was a huge shock to everyone since it's so rare to have it this young, but I'm doing okay so far. The specific type I have is very common in older women and well understood, so I'm going to be fine. It's going to be a rough six months or so of chemo, then surgery, then a radiation, but after that, it'll all be gone and I'll be healthy again. I hope you are doing well, and I'm happy to answer questions if you have any. Miss all of you and can't wait to party again soon. That's kind of how I told them, and then obviously all of them saw it, commented. Some people reached out through text and asked more questions, but I really felt like I needed to let them know because they're really close friends, and I wasn't going to be seeing them in person soon. Oh, I completely forgot to just like explain my situation at the time. So it was March, and I had graduated college the May before that, but I was still living on grounds, not really, okay, not technically on grounds, but I was living near grounds with two people who were still in college. They were a year younger than me. Ray is also a school year below me, so he was finishing up his fourth year of college. So May 7th, I think, was a Thursday, and that was like the Thursday before spring break for college. The other thing that you have to know is Gray, Cassie, and I were all part of the trumpet section in the UVA marching band, so we kind of had like a big group of trumpet players that we all knew, and I obviously knew a ton of them that were still in the band because I had just graduated the year before, so I knew three years of trumpet players who were still at UVA. And Gray and Cassie were still very involved in the trumpet section, and Gray actually shared a house with like five other guys that were in the trumpet section, so I was seeing a lot of those people still. What's going around in March in college? March Madness for basketball. 
and UVA was very good at basketball this year. This was 2019, the year that they won it all, okay? There were a lot of things going on on March 13th. I had my appointment with the fertility doctor because chemo can damage your ovaries. They wanted me to know all my options that I had with like freezing my eggs or freezing embryos or doing nothing um, to make sure like if I wanted to have kids, I had like a backup plan in case chemo damaged everything. Gray really wanted to go to this appointment. And you might think that's a little bit weird because we had been dating for just over a year and I guess it really just depends on your relationship at the time. Both of us were very serious in our relationship and we knew like this could lead to marriage, but neither of us at the time were thinking like, oh, we definitely want to get married. You want to know what's going on with your possible future wife, like if she can have kids, you know, and what the options are. So he wanted to go, I wanted him to go, I wanted him to be a part of it too. The problem was he was selected to go with the marching band to the men's basketball ACC tournament. And this was the day the band was going to be leaving for that tournament. Cassie, my roommate, also was going on that trip. Gossip spreads around like crazy in the trumpet section. I was afraid like people were going to start spreading things around. And so I wanted to tell my roommate Abby at that time. She was gone home with her family and I was going to wait for her to come back after spring break. But I was just like, I just want you to hear this from me. So I actually messaged her. Hey Abby, I hope you're doing well. I was going to wait until you got back to tell you this, but I wanted to make sure you hear, read it from me before it starts to spread around. Last Thursday, I found out I had breast cancer. It's basically the same message I sent to my high school group. But I was just like, again, I'm sorry to tell you like this. I hope I'm not messing up any plans you have and I can't wait to see you after break. She texted back, what? I said, yeah, I know. She said, can I call you? And she called me while we were on the way to the hospital. Gray went with me to this fertility appointment. So did my mom and my older sister. The problem with Gray going with me to this appointment was the rehearsal for this basketball tournament was happening at the same time. So I think we actually told the band director that day or the day before because Gray wanted to ask to see if he could miss the rehearsal to go to this appointment with me. I know people aren't going to really understand why this is a big deal, but this was like a really big deal that he missed rehearsal for this. If a normal person just didn't show up to this rehearsal, they would have been cut from the trip. Like they wouldn't have been allowed to go. So the fact that Gray was on this trip and he was on the roster for going on this trip, so all the people at that rehearsal knew he was going on this trip, but he wasn't at the rehearsal. That just caused people to be like, what the heck is going on? People have me on Snapchat and there's like the snap map feature where you can see someone's location. And they had Gray and me on that. So they could see that both of us were at the hospital. And Cassie, my roommate was obviously at this rehearsal too. And I'm not sure exactly how this played out, but they were like, Gray and Samantha are at the hospital. What is going on? And she was just like, she couldn't tell them that I had cancer because she didn't know like if that was okay to say. So she just had to like come up with like, excuses or like not answer the question. And obviously like Gray had been with me at the hospital multiple days, like the week before and that week, because I had so many appointments. I had like different scans and different appointments with different people. So if they had checked earlier in the week, they would have known that we were at the hospital then too. I know for like some of the people watching this, you're going to be like, why were people so like obsessed with your location? It's just like, that's just something people did like they looked to see where people were and it wasn't that weird of a thing that they were doing that but like it was kind of inconvenient at this time <laughs> this, this is the cue here's her appearance people that were at the rehearsal were like is samantha pregnant which is really funny because gray and i were both virgins and we remained that way until after we were married but that's what they asked and cassie was just like no she's not pregnant so she was able to say at least that i wasn't pregnant <laughs> It's a little annoying that people's minds went to that, but it's fine. So after the fertility appointment, we kind of had a little conference off to the side. I was, he was like, okay, what are you thinking? I'm like, I'm thinking I'm probably going to freeze eggs. He's like, okay, that makes sense. And then he went off on his trip. Gray and Cassie were both getting like kind of a lot of questions about like where Gray was and if anything was wrong with me and if I was pregnant. So I was texting both of them. And I think I called them both and I was just like, just, just tell the people they're on that trip. This trip wasn't the entire trumpet section or the entire band. They only select 30 people to go on this trip and only a portion of those people are trumpet players. So what happened was Gray texted a group text of trumpet players that were on that trip and was like, hey, like, 
come to my room at this time after whatever and we're gonna like talk about something like you don't have to but like i would really appreciate it if you came i think gray did most of the talking i think cassie didn't really want to talk much about it they had like a nice conversation like the eight people that were in the room and you know a bunch of them asked questions and they were answering them as best they could and that was that and it was basically just like don't please don't go spreading this around because Samantha wants to tell people when she's ready, but this is what is going on, so just so you know. And I don't know how many of those people told other people, and I don't really care at this point. Like, at this point, it didn't matter to me what people were saying about me because people were saying so many things about me for, like, multiple years. <laughs> so on March 19th is actually when I told the people that I worked with. The office was having like construction on it, so we were all like sitting really close together. So it was gonna be really hard to hide anything from them. Plus I knew when I started chemo, my hair was gonna be falling out and I wasn't gonna get a wig because I didn't want to. So I, I wanted them to know, and they are also my friends. So I wanted them to know what was going on with me because I didn't want there to just be like random rumors about like, oh, Samantha's dying, her hair's falling out. Hey, I'm editing and I forgot to mention this, but a lot of people at my work also knew that I was missing work a lot because of doctor's appointments because, you know, I obviously wasn't there. One of the guys actually reached out to me and told me that the rest of the guys were worried about me. And that's when I told him that I was doing the biopsy and that's why I was gone. But I didn't give them the results or tell them about the cancer until this day. So we were on a call with some people but we were in a meeting room with just our team. After we were done with the call with the other people, my manager was like, hey, can you like wait around here? Samantha has something that she wants to say. It was probably like six, eight people that were in the room at this time. I basically was like, hey, I just want to let you guys know this because it's going to be obvious pretty soon. I found out that I had breast cancer and I'm going to have to have chemo, surgery, radiation. I'm probably going to miss a lot of work for this and I'm going to start to look differently because my hair is gonna fall out. These were actually the first people that I said this to in person. So for me, this was like the hardest one. And so basically I was just like, this isn't, this isn't gonna be bad. Like it's just gonna be a hard year. We caught it early, it's gonna be fine. If you don't know, my diagnosis is a little weird because I was diagnosed stage four de novo but I didn't actually know I was stage four right at the beginning. So they had seen the spot on my rib where the cancer was, but they weren't sure if it was cancer or not until later on. Then they were like, oh yeah, that was cancer. I was like holding out hope that this wasn't stage four cancer because if it was on that rib, that means stage four. So it was, it was kind of weird because people were acting like it wasn't stage four, but they were also being like, oh, worst case scenario, it's stage four, so we have to do this and this and this anyway. So um, the way that I originally was telling people was, was like, hey, this is going to be okay because like this happens to a lot of people. If I was positive it was stage four off the bat, it might've been a lot harder to tell people things and I might've been getting a lot more questions. It was actually really nice how it played out where we didn't actually know it was stage four for sure until later because then I could just like tell people later and it was kind of just like an extra step on top of what people already knew. So it was, um, easier to tell people that but really they didn't ask too many questions about it they were very respectful it was just kind of hard for me to do because it was the first time I was telling anyone in person <laughs> March 24th is when I told one of my close friends Jennifer I think what happened was we got dinner or lunch or whatever it was and then we went and sat in either my car or her car and I told her the whole story and everything we knew at this point, I had so much information and I was so used to telling people the story that like it was a lot easier to tell her, even though it was hard seeing her react, obviously. It was always hard seeing anyone react to getting the news. On March 25th, Gray and I decided to tell the people who were living in his house. So this was, I want to say four other guys that were in the trumpet section that were living with him. And the reason we really wanted to tell people was I was spending a lot of time with Gray during this period, um, kind of just like alone in his room because we weren't really feeling up to like hanging out with a ton of people. So I was over at their house a lot during this time, but I really wasn't like interacting with anybody. So we just wanted to let people know what was going on. And obviously I was gonna tell them eventually, but those were the next people that we felt we had to tell. So Gray just called all of them down into 
the living room and we both told them together, which was nice having somebody else be there with me to help explain stuff. They were kind of funny because they were like, oh, we thought Samantha lost her job because I was, you know, in their house during the day a lot because I was having biopsies and procedures done. So I wasn't wanting to go into work every day because I had to like recover from those things. So they were like, oh, we thought Samantha lost her job. And so that's why she was here during the day so much. And it was just kind of funny um, what people were thinking it was and nobody thought that it was cancer. But yeah, they were asking questions and stuff and they were like, who can we tell? And I was like, you know what? Let's just let me tell the rest of the trumpet section tonight. I texted the group chat of trumpet players that were in the band during my fourth year. So it was all of the people that were in my graduating class, plus all the second through fourth years of trumpet players that were currently in the band. So I said, hey guys, you are some of my closest friends, so I wanted to fill you on on some recent news. A few weeks ago, I found out I have breast cancer. It's a huge shock, blah, blah, blah. Everything I already said to all the other people. I said, I'd appreciate it if you keep this semi-private off social media for now, as I still have some friends and family that I haven't told. I hope you all are doing well and I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Basically what you would expect would happen happened like different people texted me, I got gifts from people. They were some people that I just really wanted to know first before I announced it to the world, which I did want to do because on April 11th I announced it to Facebook. Now this was after actually I had had my first chemo. On April 2nd, I had my egg retrieval. That's where I had like the procedure done where they took the eggs out that they froze. And then on the 5th, that's when I started chemo. And if you don't know the story about how Gray and I went to the NCAA Final Four, you should watch that video because that's a fun story. Um, but basically right after my first chemo, we went to the tournament because Gray was supposed to be playing in it but since he wanted to go with me and I wanted him to come with me to my first chemo, he had to turn it down because he wouldn't have been able to get there the same day as the band. But he still wanted to see it and I wanted to see it. So we were insane and we got on a plane the day after my first chemo infusion. I felt very sick, but then we went to the final four and we got to, you know, see our friends that were still in the band um, play in various events and at the tournament. So that was really fun. So after I got home from that, I actually got pretty sick. I got a fever. And if you get like a fever over 100.4, you basically have to go to the ER when you're on chemo because it can be something really bad. It wasn't something really bad, but I was, I did need to like go into the hospital and get fluids and stuff. I think that's when I wrote my Facebook post. Still not really sure how to make this post, but I owe it to my fellow Facebookers, and I had some time to think about it today. While in the hospital with 101 fever, hooked up to some fluids while three separate nurses stuck me in different places to try to draw blood. Yeah, dramatic, I know, but seriously, my poor veins used to be so good at giving blood and they've ruined them. And they never give it back. Anyway, <laughs> they do, they never give the blood back. Anyway, about a month ago, I found out I have breast cancer. It kind of came out of nowhere since no one was really thinking about that kind of thing when you're 22. But I'm lucky to have the most amazing family and friends and doctors to help me through it. Also heated chairs and free cookies. If you'd like to know my plan, I'm going to have some rough months of chemo and surgery, take a break in Disney World in October, and be done with this whole thing by the end of the year. Also, yes, I did have my first chemotherapy treatment last Friday, and yes, I did fly all the way to the final four the next morning, and yes, I was nauseous, and yes, it was very much worth it. That is all. Also, my pee is red. Too long didn't read. Go who's boo cancer. If you guys don't know about adriamycin, the type of chemo, it, it turns all the fluids in your body red, and it's really gross. I was really excited about the heated chairs. Like, that was the coolest thing for me, that I could like sit and have a heated chair while I got chemo. It was great. I got a, a lot of really nice comments from people on Facebook. I got in touch with some people that were on, friends with me on Facebook that had had cancer that I didn't like really talk to anymore, but you know, we talked a little bit about cancer. I got a lot of comments from people that I hadn't talked to in a really long time, and it was kind of nice to catch up with them. 
Um, it kind of felt a little bit weird because it was like, are you just talking to me because I have cancer? But like, it was really nice to talk to all those people. A lot of people were confused of why I was posting this on Facebook because like, it's kind of a personal thing. And I did just want people to know, you know, like if I ran into someone, I just wanted them to know. I just thought it was easier that way if everyone knew. And so for me, that's how I dealt with it. People deal with it in different ways. Some people don't want everyone to know and that's totally fine. But for me, that was the, that was the thing that was going to feel the best for me. So that's why I did that. And then on May 25th is when I uploaded my first YouTube video. So that's when, you know, I shared it with even more people. And then I created like an Instagram account and started sharing my journey through that. And it turned into this whole channel. And yeah, so this video was probably way too long. If you've made it to the end, congratulations. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for watching and thank you for listening to me. YouTube just notified me that I have gotten 1 million views on all my videos combined. So that's really cool. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. I'm almost to 10,000, so that would be really fun to get to. And 75% of you are not subscribed, fun fact. It's really easy to subscribe, you just have to have a Google account. I really just appreciate all of you guys watching my videos and yeah, that's all, bye. <laughs>